get out. Like a lot of families during lockdown, we got a puppy. Meet Biscuit the cockapoo. It turns out that dogs need to go outside regularly or you end up with puddles everywhere. I'm not always paying attention to what she's doing and I was starting to get very frustrated with all of the cleaning. My first attempt at trying to solve this problem was to train her to press a button whenever she went near the back door. I stuck an IKEA shortcut button on the floor and encouraged her to press this whenever she wanted to go out. Press the button, Biscuit. Go on, press the button. Press the button. Press the button. Please press the button. I'm still working on that training, so in the meantime I needed a more passive automation. I placed an IKEA motion sensor under the lip of a coffee table, angled so as it points straight towards the door. Whenever something goes near the back door and triggers the motion sensor, an automation kicks off with an alert on all of the Echo Dots, a Sonos speaker and a notification on my phone. This automation evolved rapidly as I discovered its faults. I needed to reduce the false alerts or this was going to become more annoying than cleaning up the messes. The first adjustment I made was to link it to the open-close state of the back door. I'd already got a SmartThings multi-purpose sensor attached to that back door, so I added a condition to prevent the automation from running if the door was already open. But what if someone was genuinely trying to open the back door and go outside? I didn't want the automation to alert me then either. After a bit of trial and error, I figured out that it usually took about five seconds for a human to unlock and open that back door. So now there's a delay on any actions for five seconds. After five seconds, if the back door is still closed, then we carry on with our action list. Then I got complaints from the children that the alerts from the Echo Dots and Sonos were too noisy in the evenings, but I still needed to get an alert somehow. I solved this by adding a condition during the actions so as the noisy parts of the automation only run between 8am and 9.30pm. Great! Have I cracked it? Not quite. I work from home, but my wife doesn't. She was getting a bit annoyed with the notifications coming through to her phone while at work, uh, asking her to let the dog out. That last bit of the puzzle was fixed with a condition before the alert to her phone is sent, making sure that her phone is actually at home first. The end result is not perfect. We get false positives still, especially if a cat decides to look out of the window or if someone is taking a bit too long to open that door. But overall, it has massively reduced the amount of cleaning I've needed to do. Now, you may have looked at my automation and thought, hey, how has he managed to get announcements out of his Echo? Well, there are two ways. The first one is the easiest. You pay the company behind Home Assistant, called Nabu Casa, just over $6 a month for Home Assistant Cloud. Amongst many other benefits, they'll also link your Home Assistant installation to Amazon's cloud services, allowing you to very easily use your Echoes for notifications. The second way is free, but slightly more complicated, and is obviously the method I've chosen because, well, fun. Using Hacks, which is like a special custom third-party app store for Home Assistant, you need to install the Alexa Media Player integration. Once installed, you'll need to add the integration to Home Assistant, just like any other integration. This is the complicated part though. You'll need to link it to your Amazon account, and to do that, you'll need to enable two-factor authentication on your Amazon account. One of the biggest issues I have with this integration is that it randomly decides you need to re-authenticate, and quite often that re-authentication can take several attempts. I've also managed to output notifications on a Sonos speaker, and this is a lot simpler. Firstly, you need to add your Sonos speakers to Home Assistant as an integration. Mine were auto-detected because they were on the same network, so basically configured themselves. Next, you need to edit your configuration YAML file. Home Assistant has a built-in text-to-speech renderer called Picots, which converts any text you give it into a sound file, which a speaker device can then play. You could also use Google's text-to-speech service if you wanted to, which does give a more natural sounding voice, but it relies on the cloud. You simply add the TTS section to your configuration file like this, and an item for the Picots platform. Restart Home Assistant and you're ready to go. To make things easier, I created a couple of reusable scripts that allow me to output text or sound files on my Sonos speakers. 
You supply them with text or a sound file URL, a volume value and the speaker you want it to be played on and the script takes care of snapshotting the speaker's current status, playing the requested sound and then restoring the speaker's previous state. I'll put both scripts on my website for you to use. Anyway, I hope you find this useful. Let me know if it reduces the amount of cleaning you need to do or perhaps you've got a better way of doing this that you can share. I'll put all of the details for this automation up on my website and I'll put a link to that in the description. Thank you for watching. Bye.